As a pessimistic thinker, I am compelled to declare that human nature itself is corrupt, self-centered, evil in nature, heartless, and harmful. I openly scoff at psychology and psychiatry's efforts to define normal or abnormal human personalities or behavior because they fail to acknowledge the pervasive and insidious nature of our species' fundamental flaws. The cluster B types of personality disorders are arbitrary definitions that fall short because they zone in on specific areas of human nature while neglecting to look at other pervading areas of our nature that could be equally deemed antisocial, unempathetic, psychopathic, ruthless, and heartless. To truly understand our species, we must confront the fact that we are a species of insane primates with a history and ongoing behavior and thought processes that would, if truly analyzed, be worthy of a definitive classification as harmful and equally terrible akin to cluster B personalities. It is a sobering thought that we are descended from a long line of rapists, murderers, and tyrants. Our ancestors were often driven by base instincts and violent impulses, seeking power and control over others through force and coercion. It is no surprise, then, that within us darkness reigns. We carry within us the genetic legacy of our ancestors, with all of their flaws and shortcomings. We are prone to violence and aggression, driven by a desire for dominance and control. This legacy is evident in the history of human civilization. We have built great empires through conquest and bloodshed, subjugating entire populations to our will. We have engaged in genocide and ethnic cleansing, perpetrating unspeakable atrocities on those we deem inferior or different. Even in our everyday lives, we see the legacy of our violent ancestors. We may engage in verbal or physical aggression towards others, seeking to assert our dominance and control over them. We may judge others based on their appearance or status, seeing them only as means to an end rather than individuals with their own unique experiences and struggles. It is a disturbing truth that we, as a species, have become disconnected from the emotional sensitivity of other sentient beings. This is perhaps most evident in the way we treat animals, whom we routinely murder and consume without giving it a second thought. Our collective psychopathy in this regard is exemplified by the way we exploit and consume animals. We raise them in factory farms, subjecting them to cruel and inhumane conditions that would be unthinkable if they were human beings. We separate mothers from their young, deny them basic medical care, and slaughter them in the most horrific ways imaginable. This disconnection from the emotional sensitivity of animals is indicative of a much deeper underlying psychopathy in human nature. We are capable of horrific acts of violence and cruelty, often towards those who are weaker or more vulnerable than ourselves. Indeed, it is telling that many of the most notorious psychopaths in human popular culture such as serial killers, have a history of animal abuse in their childhood. It is a troubling reminder of the link between our treatment of animals and our own capacity for violence and cruelty. And yet, despite this knowledge, most humans continue to consume animal products without giving it a second thought. We pollute ecosystems with our waste, contribute to climate change through our meat consumption, and participate in a system of cruelty and exploitation that is both unsustainable and morally bankrupt. It is a bleak and dismal truth that we, as human beings, are psychopathic in nature. Our very existence is predicated on a self serving and often cruel worldview that seeks to elevate our own status at the expense of others. It is a damning indictment of our species that we should be so fundamentally flawed so inherently lacking in empathy and compassion, that we can be deemed secondary psychopaths at the very least. We are creatures of base instincts and primal desires, driven by an innate need for power and control over others. We judge people based on superficial reasoning that is entirely out of their control, reducing them to nothing more than objects to be manipulated for our own gain. 
This innate disgust we feel towards others is a symptom of our own insecurities and shortcomings, a way of deflecting attention from our own flaws by projecting them onto others. Our psychopathy is utilized by us in every aspect of our lives. We use it to navigate the world in our mating, work, friend-making, socializing, and public affairs. We seek out partners who can elevate our status, rather than those who are kind, loving, and genuine. We manipulate our colleagues and competitors in the workplace, using underhanded tactics to gain an advantage over them. We choose our friends based on their perceived social status or usefulness to us, rather than their true character or qualities as human beings. And we engage in public affairs, such as politics or activism, not out of a genuine desire to improve the world, but to further our own interests and status. Indeed, it is not just the overt psychopaths among us who are guilty of lacking empathy and compassion. Even those who consider themselves to be conscientious and caring possess a hidden tendency towards psychopathy. We may delude ourselves into thinking that we are kind and empathetic, but the truth is that there lies within us all a dark side that is capable of horrific acts. Consider the way we consume media, for example. We crave violence in movies, obsess over fighting in sports, and laugh at the misfortune of others in home videos. There is an innate horribleness within us, a schadenfreude aspect of our being that finds merriment in others failing or being hurt. We take pleasure in their pain because it means they are in a worse position than us, and we revel in the superiority we feel as a result. Is this not a form of psychopathy? It is easy to dismiss such tendencies as harmless quirks of human nature, but the reality is far more sinister. Our propensity for violence, our delight in the suffering of others, and our thirst for power and control are all hallmarks of psychopathy. It is a trait that has been with us since the dawn of humanity, and it is one that we must confront if we hope to ever transcend our base instincts. Arthur Schopenhauer once said that the two enemies of human happiness are pain and boredom. It is a sentiment that rings true, but it is also one that speaks to our own inherent flaws as human beings. We crave excitement and stimulation, even if it comes at the expense of others. We seek out ways to elevate ourselves above our peers, to dominate and control those around us. And we do all of this with a callous indifference to the suffering of others, convinced that our own desires and ambitions are the only things that matter. The truth is that psychopathy lies within us all, to varying degrees. It is a dark aspect of our being that we must confront if we hope to ever rise above our own inherent flaws. We must acknowledge our own capacity for cruelty and work to overcome it, cultivating empathy and compassion for others even in the face of our own selfish desires. Only then can we hope to create a world that is truly just and equitable for all. Recklessness and impulsivity are classic hallmarks of dark personality traits, often associated with psychopathy and other antisocial personality disorders. And yet, the reality is that we are all guilty of such behavior to some degree. We engage in risky behaviors, such as driving under the influence, using drugs or alcohol excessively, or engaging in dangerous activities without considering the potential consequences. We may make impulsive decisions without fully considering the long-term ramifications, such as quitting a job without a backup plan or making a major financial investment without doing proper research. Even in our everyday lives, we may engage in reckless or impulsive behaviors without realizing it. We may engage in social media wars or post inflammatory comments without considering the potential harm to others. We may neglect our own health or well-being, failing to take proper care of ourselves or seeking medical attention when needed. These examples speak to a deeper aspect of human nature, one that is prone to recklessness and impulsivity. It is a reflection of our own vulnerabilities and insecurities 
as well as our tendency to prioritize short-term gratification over long-term goals and objectives. This recklessness and impulsivity can have serious consequences, both for ourselves and those around us. It can lead to financial ruin, physical harm, and emotional turmoil. It can also exacerbate existing societal problems, such as addiction, mental illness, and interpersonal conflict. This is the bleak reality of our existence, a truth that is both horrifying and inescapable. We are psychopaths by nature, doomed to a life of selfishness and cruelty, forever caught in a cycle of manipulation and deception. We can only hope to mitigate the worst of our instincts, to restrain ourselves from acting on our most base impulses, and to strive towards a better world in spite of our own inherent flaws. Arthur Schopenhauer once wrote that man is the only animal who causes pain to others with no other object than wanting to do so. It is a sentiment that rings true, even today, and serves as a grim reminder of the darkness that lies within us all. We must confront this truth head-on, no matter how uncomfortable or disheartening it may be, if we hope to ever overcome our own psychopathy and strive towards a better, more compassionate world. One of the most pervasive elements of our nature is our tendency to remain oblivious to suffering. We ignore the plight of others and go about our lives as if nothing is wrong. We have kids while knowing that it is causing someone to suffer and die without any guarantee of their adequate joy, which is a reckless gamble akin to psychopathy. We deceive ourselves in business and engage in ruthless behavior to get ahead all while convincing ourselves that it's necessary to survive. We have an inability to think rationally, which is evident in our political discourse, religious beliefs, and everyday decision-making. We cling to beliefs that have no basis in fact, and we ignore evidence that contradicts our worldview. We are quick to judge others and slow to recognize our own shortcomings. We have a tendency to engage in tribalism and groupthink, which often leads to conflict and violence. We cling to our beliefs and ideologies, even when they have been proven wrong or have caused harm to others. We form alliances based on race, ethnicity, religion, and nationality, often to the detriment of those outside of our group. We have a history of engaging in wars and conflicts often for reasons that are petty or misguided. We have used violence to subjugate others, and we have justified it under the guise of civilization, progress, or freedom. We have also engaged in genocide, slavery, and other atrocities that have caused untold suffering and destruction. We have a tendency to prioritize our own self-interest over the well-being of others, even when it causes harm. This can be seen in our economic systems, where profit and growth are prioritized over the needs of workers and the environment. We exploit resources and labor in developing countries for cheap goods, causing suffering and poverty. Our justice system is also an example of our harmful nature. We often prioritize punishment and retribution over rehabilitation and restorative justice. We perpetuate cycles of violence and trauma, rather than addressing the root causes of crime and violence. We have a history of oppressing marginalized groups, such as women, people of color, and LGBTQ plus individuals. We have denied them basic rights and freedoms, and subjected them to violence and discrimination. We have also perpetuated harmful stereotypes and myths about these groups contributing to a culture of hatred and intolerance. Our obsession with power and control is another example of our harmful nature. We seek to dominate and subjugate others, often under the guise of protecting our own interests. We engage in surveillance and censorship, limit freedom of speech and expression, and use force to suppress dissent. Narcissism is a trait that is often associated with a few select individuals who are excessively self-absorbed and grandiose. However, the reality is that narcissism is a much more common aspect of human nature, 
one that is present in all of us to some degree. Our addiction to technology and social media is another example of our self-centered nature. We have become obsessed with our own image, constantly seeking validation and attention from others. We have lost touch with the natural world and with each other, becoming increasingly isolated and disconnected. At its core, narcissism is a preoccupation with the self, a belief in one's own superiority and importance over others. It manifests itself in various ways, from an inflated sense of self-worth to an obsessive need for attention and admiration. We see narcissism in our obsession with social media, where we create curated online identities that project an idealized version of ourselves to the world. We constantly seek validation in the form of likes, comments, and followers, using these metrics to gauge our own worth and importance. Narcissism also manifests itself in our interactions with others. We may be quick to judge others based on their appearance, status, or accomplishments, seeing them only as means to bolster our own sense of self-worth. We may disregard the feelings and needs of others, focusing only on our own desires and goals. Even in our work and personal lives, we may find ourselves constantly seeking recognition and praise, using our achievements to validate our own sense of importance. The reality is that narcissism is an aspect of human nature that we cannot escape. It is a product of our own insecurities and vulnerabilities, a way of deflecting attention from our own flaws by projecting them onto others. When it comes to choosing a partner, we often ignore negative traits that should be deal-breakers. We may overlook signs of selfishness, aggression, or narcissism, all in the pursuit of sexual or other forms of attraction. And yet, the consequences of such choices can be far-reaching and devastating. By choosing partners who exhibit negative traits, we run the risk of perpetuating those traits into future generations. Our children may inherit those same negative qualities, leading to a cycle of dysfunction and abuse that can be difficult to break. This tendency to ignore negative traits in partners speaks to a deeper aspect of human nature one that is prone to prioritize short-term gratification over long-term goals and objectives. We may be drawn to partners who exhibit attractive physical or personality traits, without considering the potential consequences of such choices. For example, we may be attracted to partners who are physically attractive, even if they exhibit negative personality traits such as selfishness or aggression. We may be drawn to partners who share our interests or hobbies, even if they exhibit negative character traits such as dishonesty or manipulativeness. And yet, the consequences of such choices can be far-reaching and devastating. We may find ourselves in abusive or dysfunctional relationships, perpetuating negative patterns of behavior that can be difficult to break. It is a difficult truth to confront but the reality is that we are all capable of sadism. It lies deep within our hearts, a dark impulse that we often try to suppress or deny. And yet, it is a part of our being that cannot be ignored, for it is an integral part of the human experience. Sadism is defined as the enjoyment of inflicting pain or suffering on others. It is a trait that is often associated with overt psychopaths but the reality is that it is a much more common and insidious aspect of human nature. We may not all actively seek out opportunities to harm others, but we are all capable of enjoying the pain and suffering of others, to some extent. Consider, for example, the way we consume media. We watch movies and TV shows that are filled with violence and suffering, reveling in the bloodshed and chaos on screen. We play video games that allow us to engage in virtual acts of violence, enjoying the thrill of destruction and domination. We read books that depict characters enduring immense pain and suffering, finding a perverse pleasure in their struggles. Even in our everyday lives, we may find ourselves taking pleasure in the misfortune of others. 
we may laugh at a colleague's embarrassment during a presentation or enjoy the schadenfreude of watching a rival fail. We may gossip about others behind their backs, enjoying the power that comes with knowing their secrets. It is a cruel irony of human existence that we bring life into the world, fully aware of the suffering and pain that awaits us all. We create new generations of humans, knowing full well that they too will face illness, loss, and death. And yet, we continue to do so, with a cold-hearted acceptance of the inevitable. This acceptance of death is perhaps the most insane aspect of human existence. We know that we do not want to die horribly ourselves, yet we bring others into the world knowing that they too will suffer and die and perhaps horrifically. It is a form of harmful madness. And yet, we continue to create new life, to perpetuate the cycle of suffering and pain. We do so with a callous indifference to the inevitable, accepting death as an inevitable part of the human experience. The reality is that we are all doomed to suffer and die, regardless of our station in life. We may delude ourselves into thinking that we are special or important, but the truth is that we are all insignificant in the grand scheme of things. These examples may seem harmless, but they speak to a deeper aspect of human nature. We are all capable of enjoying the pain and suffering of others, to some extent. It is a sadistic impulse that lies just beneath the surface of our consciousness, waiting to be unleashed at any moment. We have a tendency to engage in addictive behaviors that cause harm to ourselves and others. We abuse drugs, alcohol, and other substances, often leading to addiction and destructive behavior. We also engage in behaviors like gambling and overreading that can cause financial ruin, physical harm, and psychological distress. Our educational systems often prioritize competition over collaboration and cooperation. We place a high value on grades, test scores, and achievements, often at the expense of creativity, curiosity, and intrinsic motivation. This can lead to a culture of stress, anxiety, and depression, and perpetuate harmful stereotypes and biases. Our media and entertainment industries often glorify violence, aggression, and sexual objectification. We consume content that degrades and dehumanizes others, perpetuating harmful messages about gender, race, and sexuality. This can lead to a culture of violence and intolerance, and contribute to a cycle of harm and abuse. Our political systems often prioritize power and control over the needs of citizens. We engage in corruption, cronyism, and nepotism, leading to a lack of trust and legitimacy in our institutions. We also perpetuate harmful policies and practices, such as mass incarceration, police brutality, and military aggression. The bystander effect is a perfect example of our inherent flaws as human beings. It refers to the phenomenon where individuals are less likely to intervene in an emergency situation when others are present. This effect occurs because people assume that someone else will intervene, leading to a diffusion of responsibility and a lack of action. This phenomenon highlights our tendency to prioritize our own self-interest and avoid discomfort or danger, even at the expense of others' well-being. We often remain passive in the face of suffering and horror, getting on with our lives as if nothing happened, unless it directly affects us. The bystander effect is a testament to our brutal nature, as it illustrates our lack of empathy and willingness to prioritize our own comfort and safety over others' lives. We fail to take responsibility for our actions and inactions, perpetuating a culture of indifference and apathy. Moreover, the bystander effect can be seen in a wider context, where we often ignore the suffering of others unless it directly affects us. We turn a blind eye to global issues such as poverty, inequality, and climate change, perpetuating systems of oppression and harm. Rampant sycophantism is a pervasive and disturbing aspect of human nature. 
We have a tendency to kiss the ass of those who have power or something that we want, regardless of how evil they are. This behavior is a testament to our innate dark, uncaring, and amoral nature, and it can be seen in everyday life, including love. We often prioritize our own interests over the well-being of others, and we are willing to compromise our values and ethics to achieve our goals. This can be seen in our relationships, where we often tolerate or even participate in toxic and abusive behavior for the sake of love or companionship. We ignore red flags and warning signs, and we rationalize or excuse harmful behavior. In the workplace, we often kiss up to those in power, regardless of their character or morality. We flatter and praise them, hoping to gain favor or advance our careers, even if it means participating in unethical or harmful practices. We ignore the suffering of others and prioritize our own success, perpetuating a culture of greed and individualism. In politics, we often support leaders who espouse harmful and oppressive ideologies simply because they promise to deliver what we want. We ignore their character flaws and harmful actions, rationalizing or excusing their behavior, and perpetuating a culture of ignorance and apathy. The cold and harsh utilitarian aspect of society is a disturbing reflection of our innate flaws as human beings. We often disregard people on the basis of perceived utility, perpetuating a culture of inequality and oppression. This utilitarian mindset stems from our tendency to prioritize efficiency and productivity over the well-being of individuals. We view people as resources to be used and discarded, rather than as valuable members of society with their own inherent worth and dignity. This mindset is especially evident in the realm of economics, where we measure success and value in terms of financial wealth and material possessions. Those who are deemed to have high levels of utility, i.e., those who can contribute the most to the economy, are given preferential treatment, while those who are deemed to have low levels of utility are often marginalized and left behind. This approach to economics ignores the fact that individuals have little control over their abilities and financial prowess. It disregards the fact that people are born into different circumstances, and that their opportunities and outcomes are shaped by a wide range of factors beyond their control. Moreover, this utilitarian mindset perpetuates a culture of competition and individualism, where success is measured in terms of personal achievement rather than the well-being of society as a whole. We ignore the fact that we are all interconnected, and that the well-being of one person is inextricably linked to the well-being of others. Bullying is a pervasive problem that affects both children and adults, often with devastating consequences. It can take many forms, from physical violence to emotional abuse, and can occur in a variety of settings, including schools, workplaces, and social groups. And yet, despite the widespread awareness of the harm caused by bullying, many people simply watch and let it happen. They may be bystanders, too afraid or too indifferent to intervene, or they may even participate in the bullying themselves. It is a tragic irony that bullies, who have caused so much harm and suffering to others, often go on to have children of their own who may themselves become victims of bullying. They know all too well the pain and trauma caused by bullying, and yet they may still perpetuate the cycle of abuse and violence by their own actions or inaction. This speaks to a deeper aspect of human nature, one that is prone to indifference and apathy in the face of injustice. It is a troubling truth that many people select mates based solely on their physical appearance or intellectual abilities, and are unwilling to consider potential partners whom they do not find attractive or healthy. And yet they go on to have children who may well turn out to be like the people they deemed unworthy of their own romantic love or even friendship. This is a callous reality of our thoughtless and uncaring nature. We do not even think beyond our own immediate offspring to contemplate that our grandchildren or other descendants may well turn out to be people who we in life avoided or bullied. 
This is brutal stain on our character and shows we truly do not care about outcomes for others. It is all a big game of getting what we want despite the possible consequences for others. In summary, we are an innately disturbing species with a long history of evidence-based dark personality traits that are pervasive throughout our kind. In each of us is a relentless unsympathetic monster that is the cause of all our sufferings. We are the problem, and there is no solution to it as an ongoing concern, it is who we are. May we go extinct.